we were looking at LASIK and issues that deal uh, with LASIK in um, uh, high-value assets, people like uh, aviators, uh, firemen, policemen in the military setting. We wanted to do LASIK on them. We had concerns and issues, and we found that independent of anything else, when you use a femtosecond laser, and we were using the intralase to make the flap, it resulted in a better quality outcome and a safer procedure. We also took a look at the other component of a LASIK procedure, and that is how you correct the refractive error, the excimer laser that's used, the, the ablation profile. We did a study where we combined um, the femtosecond, the intralase, with this wavefront guided advanced custom view in this procedure, and we found that the sum of those two components were greater than the parts. We got even better quality. Uh, one of the sentinel studies that we did was we looked at then night driving performance because that sums up many of the uh, issues that we had previously seen in LASIK. We combined the two technologies in what is now called iLASIK and we looked at night driving performance. We made night driving visual performance better on average in these patients. So that was the watershed moment for LASIK in, in these individuals like aviators. And that led to uh, the Navy doing LASIK, eye LASIK, in aviators. A spinoff was the Air Force, U.S. Air Force, then approved LASIK for its aviators. And following close in the heels is when NASA allowed LASIK. Laser-assisted in situ keratomeliusis, LASIK, can only be performed by a trained physician and is specified for reduction or elimination of myopia, hyperopia, and astigmatism, as indicated within the product labeling. Patients are requested to consult with their eye care professional and patient information booklet regarding the potential risks and benefits for laser refractive surgery. Results may vary for each individual patient.